will now turn to the NDP. Ms. Martin. Thank you, Mr. Chair. And I, th I thank again the committee for being here, such a large committee, so we'll try to get through it as quickly as we can. So first, a few opening comments about concerns that have been brought to me um, at, about the, the uh, redevelopment project in Cape Breton. While the announcements for the cancer center and the revitalization of the emergency room at the regional hospital are wonderful announcements, they still pose some concerns to those residents in New Waterford and North Sydney. Um, as aside from that, we know that kids are going to Halifax for mental health treatment. There's 363 days for the first appointment for an adult to receive mental health treatment. People in Cape Breton are waiting months for, health, for home care. Spouses are being separated from New Waterford to Tatamagush, being placed in long-term care facilities. In Cape Breton, we know that our patients are dying at a higher rate than anywhere else in the province. We also know that doctors in CBRM are retiring or leaving, and we know that last week, or over the last couple of weeks, 20 have resigned. We also know that the regional hospital emergency department is already overloaded, so we're going to add 20 more thousand people to that. We also know that la over the last week or so that there was not one empty bed in the emergency room at the Cape Breton Regional Hospital. Finally, we also know that um, we had the benefit of having EHS here at our last meeting. And when I asked uh, Terry what happens when there's no ambulance available, and I call an ambulance for a loved one in New Waterford, and the ambulance is coming from Bedecker and to Ganesh, what happens? His answer was, and it's enhanced, that my family member would be non-living by the time that the ambulance got there. And these are the concerns that this redevelopment pro project has. Because while it's a wonderful idea, people want to know what they do today. People want to know how they get medical services today. Because in two or three or five years, it is a wonderful plan. But people are dying today. So having said that, um, did the minister go over the bulk of the announcement with the um, cancer and emergency room expansion, or is there more information to come from that? I'm not sure who that question is directed to. Whoever wants to take who it. Who would like to answer it? Doc, Mr. LaFleche. I'm not going to touch that damn button. <laughs> um, uh, so the question, I think, was did the minister release all of the information or is there more to come? Well, uh, obviously, the, the announcement was a high-level announcement generally describing where we are. There's a lot of detail which will come through a functional uh, planning process. And uh, maybe I could ask um, someone back there, is that you, Brian, to describe that, that process? And maybe Dr. Orell could talk about his side of the process so you understand what flows down at a detail level from those higher level announcements. Mr. Ward. So following the announcements and during the announcements, so we were doing a, the healthcare staff, were doing the functional programming with, uh, with our uh, casein architecture and Agnum Peckham. And then as we started to work out through the, uh, <clears throat> through the process, it came evident that the program that was required at the regional um, for the emergency department, uh, the space requirements certainly weren't uh, sufficient. So we were able to, uh, uh, we went into government with a proposal to provide a, a, a new emergency department so that we wouldn't interfere with the existing emergency department and uh, also the same with the cancer care. We started to look at cancer care and uh, as we were looking at cancer care we realized that there was a, a large addition and a, and a significant renovation within the existing cancer care. So it's very difficult to renovate a space and to still provide the health care needs of, of the people in, in the Cape Breton region. So the decision was also made to ask government to provide a new uh, cancer center. And the same with the uh, critical care. We started to look at critical care. How can we renovate critical care when we're actually using it? And as you all know, the uh, hospitals are running at 100%. So the, uh, so the decision to, uh, the, the team decision to, to provide the government with an option of uh, a new cancer care, a new emergency department, and new critical care was brought into government. And we had approval prior to the uh, Minister making that announcement. Thank you. Uh, Dr. Oral? 
Uh, healthcare is enormously complicated, and um, I feel the mandate for the redevelopment project has to be well defined, or we will get bogged down in all of the day to day things that happen. All of the things that have been pointed out um, uh, by Ms. Martin are certainly well known to us, and they have affected uh, us in the way that we are functionally planning for the future. But our project is for future care delivery, and we cannot address all of the issues that currently exist because we wouldn't get our mandate accomplished. Um, having said that, uh, many of the things that uh, uh, have been pointed out are going to be uh, much, much um, easier to deal with in a redesigned healthcare system that we're planning. Thank you. Ms. Mark. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. With all due respect, um, I, I doubt it would be easier to deal with people dying today in a, in a redesigned healthcare system. Um, my concern, as is with most of Cape Breton, is what's going on today. Um, so if I could just go back to the building um, specifics. So I guess what I was trying to get at, have all of the announcements regarding the redevelopment of the regional hospital been announced? Mr. LaFleche. Yeah, okay, so there are other things happening in the regional hospital. Obviously we're vacating the existing ICU, CCU mm -hmm. space. We're vacating some of the ER way down the road when we get the new facility built. And so there will be things that go into those spaces. But I think again, uh, and that will be announced in due course. We haven't done the planning, all the planning for that. So maybe Brian, you can just talk about where we are in the planning for all of that other stuff going into the regional. Mr. Ward. So following with the announcement, uh, with the most recent announcement, we're starting now to look at the facility. So part of the master planning strategy is to start look at the existing facility. So look at the existing Glace Bay Hospital, look at the existing regional hospital. Um, start to look at what services are provided to, well, we have been looking at what services are provided in North Sydney and New Waterford. And then we're trying to bring them back into the uh, regional facility. So the vacancies that will finally occur as we open up the new emergency cancer care, critical care, then what we'll be doing is we'll be starting to uh, renovate within the existing hospital, provide more room for the services that require more room that will be in that hospital, and also any of the other services that will be brought in from North Sydney or from uh, New Waterford. Ms. Martin. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Is there a time frame assigned to that or, or that you could list? Mr. Ward. Yeah, we're looking at the full master plan to be done uh, late August, early September. Uh, the master programming is, uh, is, is being finalized this month, and uh, the programs themselves have been uh, pretty much finalized this month awesome. also. Ms. Martin. Awesome. Thank you for that. Um, so I'd like to talk about inpatient beds now, and we recently talked about this in, in budget estimates. So right now, um, adding the intensive care or the critical care or intermediate care beds um, to the existing 24, so that will bring us at 36. Right now, there's 21 inpatient beds in New Waterford and 45 in North Sydney, so that's a total of 60, 65. So losing those beds in those two inpatient hospitals, those acute care beds, will be down one quarter of the total patients in CBRM. The 12 new beds that have been announced recently are not enough to mitigate that loss. The minister has said, though, in estimates, that we shouldn't assume that these beds will disappear, that the functional processing hasn't been completed. Could somebody please clarify um, that we have a glimmer of hope that these 40-some-odd beds will remain somewhere, and where would that be? Mr. Day. Thank you for the question, Tammy. Um, so based on the functional programming that we're doing, we're looking at all inpatient services that are currently in existence within North Sydney, New Waterford, Glace Bay, the regional hospital, even Harbourview, um, which is kind of the, the forgotten entity within the whole mix of the redevelopment. And we're looking at, you know, in the future, we're not going to have any less beds in, than what we currently have. So how do we redesign the system that we're doing just to make sure that we, because we know the services are going to change. And we, so we're not losing those 45 beds in North Sydney. So we need to figure out where they're going to go and what mix they're going to be. And maybe they look differently in the, in the level of care that they provide, but how are they going to look? So we're still working on that as far as the functional programming. So hopefully as that moves forward and we get that finalized, we'll be able to give you, you know, a real answer as to where they're going to be and what it's going to look like. Ms. Martin. 
Thank you, Mr. Chair. So specifically, would it be possible that some of those beds would be in the new facilities in New Waterford and North Sydney, as they are now currently in the community? We sure. don't know that yet. We still have to work on that functional forming. So that's that. the inpatient part is still ongoing. We haven't finished that one yet. So as we look at that redesign with our clinical leaders, we're still trying to figure that stuff out. Yeah. Mr. Martin. Thank you, Mr. Chair, and thank you for that answer. I'd like now to talk about long-term care um, and the, the new buildings, the new facilities that will be um, created or, or reconstructed. Um, will the nursing homes be freestanding? in the community where they are, where the beds are provided now, and will they be, will they be funded publicly or privately? Mr. LaFleche. So, uh, they will be in the same community, yes. Uh, the facilities in general will be in the same committee. We talked about that earlier. But in terms of uh, a decision on uh, uh, you're talking about the, how the building will be funded, not the service. Not the service. Okay. Oh, the service. Yeah, okay. So maybe I'll let Denise answer, because in terms of the building, no decision has been made yet. We're not at that stage. But maybe, Denise, you can talk about the service. Ms. Perrette. So, so we're expanding the long-term care capacity in, in both those communities. New freestand, well, they may not be entirely freestanding. They may be associated with the community health centers that are there. 74 net new beds, and it's a publicly funded system. Ms. Martin. Thank you. And publicly run? Ms. Perrette. I'm not, I'm not sure if all those decisions have been made, but I can assure you it's publicly funded. Ms. Martin. So what will be done with the empty hospitals with New Waterford and North Sydney? Mr. LaFleche. Well, we'll add them to the existing stock of empty hospitals we have like Colchester. Um, and that's a bit of a joke, but uh, we, uh, we will have empty hospitals anywhere we build a new facility and don't renovate, just like we have empty schools anywhere we build a new facility and don't renovate. In the case of the hospitals, uh, we'll, we'll have to determine the legal status of those sites, but generally they will, if, if the legal status is that they return to the province, then uh, our land division will take care of the future of them. Ms. Martin. Thank you, Mr. Chair. I would beg to differ with New Waterford, though, because I believe that New Waterford Hospital is community owned and was community built. Well, as I said, we'll do some legal work on that to see where they go. As in the case of schools, there's always a complicated history. In some cases, we find we think we own a school, but then it was actually owned by another group and then willed to some third group. And so we'll, we'll go through that process. And uh, I assure you that uh, we are not looking to keep uh, facilities that uh, we don't have to keep. Ms. Martin. Thank you, Mr. Chair. What sort of considerations are guiding the functional planning team in making these decisions around the, the facilities for long-term care? Mr. LaFleche. Uh, sorry, uh, could you just, just describe a bit more what you mean by that question? Ms. Martin. Well, what's, what's guiding the location, the process, the size, the, the staffing, whether public or private? Oh, very good, okay. So, attached, to, uh, <laughs> attached to the health center or not? Yeah, o only a couple of those would be in, in the field of, uh, of uh, Nova Scotia lands and, and, and transportation infrastructure renewal. So we'll address those, and then I'll turn over the, the, some of the questions, some of the part of the question to uh, Denise. Um, in terms of location, our instructions were to put them back in the communities they're in, whether they're exactly on the same site or at a site 500 feet away. A lot of that is determined by uh, the size of the land we need, uh, whether we can easily acquire the land, uh, the access to the land, we have made a decision to uh, co-locate the uh, long-term care facilities uh, with the community health centers. So that right away uh, gives you a certain dimension of, of, of land. Uh, and in doing that, we also have to consider entrances and exits, egress to the sites uh, in terms of transportation. So all of that factors in, which gets us to uh, a smaller set of available land portions in those two communities, we're talking New Waterford and North Sydney, 
that are possible. So our land division is working uh, with uh, Brian, who is the project director for Cape Breton, uh, to see what is available. And of course, we talk to the clinical people to see if there are any no-goes, whether there are any issues that uh, they have, which uh, again would uh, uh, allow us to constrain to a smaller subset the available land. So we're going through a process like that. And maybe, I don't know, Brian, if you can add to that process. Mr. Ward. Well, I guess, uh, as the deputy mentioned, co-locating co the uh, long-term care and the community health centers onto the same, same properties will allow us also to use some of the same resources, possibly uh, one heating plant. Uh, we'll be able to uh, possibly, uh, if there's some sort of an amenity within the community health center where you want to sell sandwiches and, and that sort of thing, you could use the kitchen that's in the long-term care. You also, uh, if you had long-term care uh, patients who needed to uh, have certain types of uh, health care needs, we could we can move them from one facility to the other without bringing in some sort of a patient transfer. So there's a lot of pluses on that side of keeping the two on the same site. So the other part of the, sorry, the, other part of the question you asked. Mr. LaFleche. How they were going to be, yeah, sorry. The other parts of the question you asked were about how they're going to be operated. Is that right? And then there was another question on... Um, Public. I believe Mr. Day has a comment. Okay, yeah, and I'm, so I want to turn it over, yeah. Mr. Day. Yes, thank you. I think um, Brian briefly hinted at it there is there's real benefits to having the long-term care and the community health centers locate, co-located together in, in the same structure. Um, one of the issues you mentioned earlier, Tammy, was about EHS. So as you know, if somebody in a long-term care facility right now becomes ill and they have to be transported to a hospital site, well, that requires an EHS transfer. So co-locating them within the same structure actually provides some benefits mm. and eases some of the strain on EHS because if a person in long-term care becomes ill, they can directly go to an attached community health center, get the lab tests that they needed, get x-rays, those sorts of things, um, which actually provides a, a relief on the system that way. Um, it also has other opportunities where their primary care physician may be co-located in the same structure um, and those sorts of things. So are there all kinds of benefits to co-locating those in the same facility? Ms. Martin. Thank you. Thank you for that clarification. So I'd like to talk a bit about staffing concerns and the recent NSGEU survey that, that was uh, discussed last week. 93% of nurses, nurses surveyed say they are being put at risk because they work short. 69 say that they've witnessed a near miss. 92% say their workload has increased. 80% say their employer's decision to change the way they interpret overtime language in their contract has increased their workload. 85% say they work short at least once per week. 77 say their employer's decision to change the way back to the overtime um, has actually increased the time on the unit that they are working short. T only 12% of the respondents said they, work, they feel safe at work, which is pretty dis disturbing. 84% of respondents say they have phys um, had physical or verbal threats or abuse or violence, and 35% of nurses in asked say they, their injuries over that same period of time that they have sustained during that period. So going forward with the redevelopment, although the crisis is now, um, building this capacity and these new facilities, is the staffing component um, any part of this planning going forward? Mr. McDougall, two minutes. I'm sorry, one minute. No. Uh, so I think <clears throat> overall we're taking into consideration health service resourcing for Eastern Zone as it currently stands and allowing the Cape Breton redevelopment planning, uh, and when I say planning, the functional planning and then the master programming to help develop uh, the future state in relation to what our resource plans would be. So, so currently we are able to uh, determine the uh, amount of long-term care, or sorry, the LTD, uh, mat leaves, and those types of things that impact our overall um, resources, and we build that into our uh, recruitment strategy for nursing in particular, and uh, that helps articulate to uh, the organization uh, what our needs are you know, each year going forward. Um, so with that, in combination with the service planning for the Cape Breton Redevelopment, we'll be able to develop a, a service planning needs that we can uh, work with government and our education partners to help uh, build the platform for our health services needs in the future. Thank you. Order, time has expired.